Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And tonight, today, you're going to see just a fantastic reason why we are the best town around with our announcement here with the Our House Inc. folks about a new facility uh, to handle adults 21 and over with special needs. Let me first introduce our dais here. To my far right, Brian Molnar, Assistant Recreation Director. To his left, Vito Simaluka, Recreation Director. Uh, to his left, Corey Spiller. To my right, Third Ward Councilman, including Evan L. Port Reading, where the permanent facility will be located. We'll get into those details. To my left, Michelle DeCorsano, the President of Our House, Inc. To her left, Jimmy Carroll, uh, former Councilman, current part-time uh, employee for the Township, and he is keeping an eye on this for us, and he's been very involved in it. We'll get into hearing from Jimmy soon. To his left, John Cook, who works for Vito and Brian, and he's overseeing the, this facility, among other things. Uh, to his left, Dennis Green, the health director, and back there with the orange shirt, uh, Chris Costi, who is our um, jack of all trades special projects manager. He worked on this building and he's working on the permanent home. So, uh, about two plus years ago, I'd say, uh, Alan Barnett of town and his wife Julie and a bunch of other people came to see me uh, and they had a request, and that was a very reasonable request. They all were parents of kids in their late teens, early 20s. Uh, at 21, the school district stops being responsible for the education of, adult, of kids and adults with special needs. After 21, they're on their own, and they have to fend for themselves, find out where to go, find a place. It's, it's a difficult life decision, I guess, for these parents. So they came to us and said, what do you think we can do about it? Now, Jimmy and I go way back with the Knights of Columbus in terms of our involvement with the special needs population. Jimmy's very involved in the one-on-one -on -one program uh, with the Forge Knights. Uh, we all have been to hand in hand for years, cooking and walking around with the kids. And uh, uh, we've been to Woodbridge State School. Now it's the D developmental center, or was the developmental center. Many times, uh, I can remember being Santa Claus. Jimmy was an elf coming in on a fire truck, going there for Christmas in July, and handing out kids. Well, I, I couldn't be the elf. I mean, <laughs> come on. So the point is, when they came to see us, it struck a chord. It, it meant something to think about these parents that have 19 and 20 year olds and they're wondering what are they going to do. So Alan and the, and the group um, suggested we help them try to find a place. Actually back then in the back of my mind we were in the process of working with the Hess Corporation who had been bought out. They sold the gas stations, they sold their terminal, they sold their building uh, and they had this building on uh, West Avenue of Port Reading. It was their training center. Uh, I had in the back of my mind, as soon as they made that request, that, you know what, we're talking to Hess, we're trying to get them to donate the building. We were very nice to them overall and all their plans, and we did a lot of good things for them. They've been great to us. But I said, that's a building that we're going to try to get them to donate to us. And if they do, that would be the perfect spot for something for special needs adults. So we put Jimmy on the mission. He left the council, what, a year and a half ago? almost two years ago. We put him on the mission because of his history and his passion for uh, the field of, of special needs uh, adults uh, population. And he scoured the state and he came up with a company called Our House Inc. And then we toured them, we toured several of them, but we toured them. Uh, they have four facilities or five facilities, Michelle? Four? Five. Five. Okay, five other facilities. We went to a couple of them. We were just incredibly amazed by the way they um, ran their ran their places and we selected them and then began the process of negotiating to have them come to Woodbridge. I can tell you that there's been nobody as, as pleasant and as easy to negotiate with in the last 10 years that I've been mayor as Michelle, Nicole, and the people from Our House Inc. They were just wonderful. They wanted to expand. They wanted to come to Woodbridge. We wanted them to come here. Um, Anything they wanted, we agreed to. I mean, pretty much, you know, she'd like be very sheepish and, you know, can we, can we get this? Of course you can. Well, it was just a pleasure to deal with these ladies, and, and we now have a great agreement. This is not the facility. Today we're in the Island American Legion. We bought this a couple of months ago from the Legion. The Legion is going to continue to rent some space from us to have their meetings and have their veterans uh, events, but we have this great big room here, a room behind us, an office over to the side. This is going to be a senior citizen center. But we made a commitment to try to be open right after September because that's a key date. That wherever your kid goes in September, it'll probably be, be to the next June or the next September. So this is important that we get something by September. So we're here now for a couple of months in the Island American Legion. Our house will hopefully move over to uh, the center. It's called the Cypress Recreation Center now on, on um, 
on West Avenue. They'll move there sometime between November and December and have that as a permanent home. But we wanted to get started, so we're here temporarily, and so far, so good. I think it's been great. Let me start by introducing Michelle Del Corsano. She is the executive director and president of Our House Inc. Could you please say a few words about uh, sure. this whole, whole project? Sure. So the mayor took uh, most of what I was going to say, well, but I'll that. say it from my side is that, you know, the mission of our house is so great. And, and what we try and do is just serve as many people as we possibly can, as we possibly can, because the, gr the need is so great, as we all know, in the state of New Jersey. I think it's one out of 65, it might be even less, kids are diagnosed with autism. And our Hope Autism Solutions Program does something that some other day programs don't do for our kids is that they they, they treat and they, they look at the, the guys that walk in with autism and we, we, we cater to them. We do things so that they feel comfortable. Um, and I think that all the parents that are here today can attest to that. Um, while we want to further our mission, it's, it's sometimes difficult because of financial constraints. Um, each time we open up a program, it's, it's pretty expensive and it takes a long time to fundraise and to be able to do that. So when Al and Julie came and said to us that, um, you know, we want you to open this program, and I said, okay, if you build it, we'll come. We're happy to come, but um, I kind of put that off. And the next thing I knew, I got a call from Jim Carroll, and he said, hey, you know, we want to come tour it, and then it, the wheels just went in motion. Um, and it does take a village to make a dream become a reality. And thanks to the Township of Woodbridge and everybody that we've worked there with, uh, it has become the easiest, easiest reality that we've ever been a part of. As Mayor McCormick said, it was, you know, we're not used to dealing with this either. We've had to negotiate on other sides and it's like, well, can we get this? And, you know, we're used to being a nonprofit where it can be difficult to, uh, to financially afford some things. And the mayor, every time I turned around, was like, no, we'll get you that. And anybody I talk to at, at the town has just been amazing. Um, so I, I truly feel blessed that we've been able to um, meet Al and Julie and, and their son and be able to uh, lead to being able to serve so many more people. Um, so thank you to everybody. I know that there are many, many people here who I've worked with um, as mayor mentioned all their names. Um, they have been just amazing. Bob Landolfo is another person who has just been um, very, very helpful. So a thank you to all of them. A thank you to the Our House staff. There's Nicole Weir, who's our Director of Day Services. Um, there's Daniel Langford, who is our Assistant Director. Uh, Natalie Tortorello, our COO, and Tara Johnson in the back there, who has just been amazing in, in opening this program. Um, and the staff who work here. And then finally, a huge thank you to our parents and our participants who make this program possible. And we are grateful that you trust us with your kids and that your kids come here every day and are just so happy to be a part of this. We love serving them and we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot you actually mentioned our house to us when you first came in, right? Yes. Yeah, you were, you were the ones that first turned us on to that. Yeah, I forgot that part. I thought we started from scratch, went looking, but when you do things in government, you can't just do a, a contract with who you want. You've got to go through some kind of process to find the right company and, and some kind of competitive uh, process. And we did do that. That's where Jimmy did scour the, the state, but ultimately settled in our house. And I'd like to ask Jimmy Carroll if he would say a few words on behalf of the township for this great project. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, actually, they gave me a list of about 20 facilities, and they raided them. So, <laughs> so then, you know, I would visit them or I would call them, you know, the different facilities. And, and like I said, the first time uh, Marta Lefsky and I went up to uh, see our house, I came away saying, well, no wonder they said this is an excellent program. That, that was one of their high ratings ones. So, uh, and I, we spoke to the mayor and the council. And listen, this town has been wonderful. There's so many people, like everybody's thinking here, but there's so many people, the guys that re redid this room just did a fantastic job, and they did it a very short time. Chris, you know, all the construction work that we're doing, it was just fantastic. And the support, again, like I said, from the mayor and the council and the directors and all the branches, it's just, it's just been wonderful. But all I can say is to the mayor, thank you so much for giving me this assignment. Uh, it was truly a journey of love. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So this worked the way government's supposed to work. A citizen comes with an idea, it's a good idea, the government acts on it, works with the group. We had many meetings with the whole group. Let me mention the members of the group. We have not only Alan and Julie Barnett, who were at that very first meeting, Angela and Joe Seco, Jolie Kirshner, 
uh, Eleni Christou and Prokopis Christou, uh, and Nelson R. Silva. Did I get everybody? I think so. Well, let me now ask Alan to come up and say a few words. I met his son two weeks ago. I came to the first day, and he was outside waiting for the bus. Just a, just a joy of a, a young man. Uh, and, and you're the reason why we're here today, Alan. You came with, with the group to us. You had the thought, what can government do? A lot of times, government can't do things, but in this case, we did. I'm so glad we did, and I want to thank you and ask you to come up and say a few words now. I was thinking maybe around 45 minutes, but I decided yeah. around two. <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you to, to Mayor McCormick, to Jimmy Carroll, Woodbridge Township, as well as Michelle Del Corsano, Nicole Ware, Tara, Danielle, Danielle Lumley, the whole staff of Hope Autism Services, and our house, uh, my, my amazing wife, Julie, Angela Sika, Tracy Peterson, and anyone else that I might have missed that was really instrumental in bringing this program to Woodbridge. So in preparation for my son Thomas aging out of the school district program, we began the search for a day program for him. And we did find programs we liked, but we didn't find anything that had a location in Woodbridge. And we would ask, are you planning on relocating to Woodbridge? And they said, no. My wife looked at me and said, and if you know my wife, this is this is something for me. She looks at me and she says, you have to fix this. <laughs> well, as a parent group, my wife and I, Mrs. Sika and Mrs. Peterson, met with Mayor McCormick, outlined what we felt was needed for the kids, and he immediately agreed that there was a need for this post-21 program at Woodbridge and that the township was here to help. And he told us to work with Jimmy Carroll, and for Jimmy, that began a string of multiple program visits, parent meetings running well into the evening, and overall, just an incredible amount of work that happened in such a short amount of time to bring this program to fruition and to bring it to the young adults with autism in our community that call our community home. Our kids need to be in programs that keep them in the communities that they know, where they feel safe, where they feel secure, and that they are provided opportunities to be productive in that community. And on behalf of the parents who are currently involved in the program, the parents of the soon-to-be participants and the participants themselves, I thank the Township of Woodbridge Administration and our house for bringing us this program. Uh, I'd like to ask Corey Spiller, who I said before is the councilman representing Port Reading. Uh, he will be uh, you know, keeping an eye on this from the council perspective. Corey, would you say a few words? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, real quick, uh, my children always like to ask me little questions. And they asked me yesterday, we were joking around. They said, you know, Daddy, what makes you happy to be a council person? It stays like this. I mean, this gets me choked up. Uh, to be a part of this, I want to thank everyone involved um, bringing this great program to Woodbridge Township. Anything we can do to make the community better, that's, what we, that's, what, you know, that's our purpose. So uh, once again, thank you very much. As I said, this is all going to fall within the uh, rec recreation department, so I'd like to ask Vito Simaluka, our rec director, to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. You know, there's so many people behind the scenes that really helped uh, make this work, and I want to thank those people. Of course, you've heard their names before. Jimmy Carroll, uh, John Cook, who is, uh, who is fantastic and instrumental. He's going to act as a liaison between uh, this group and the township. But, you know, there, there's an old saying. It's kind of a joke. It says, we're from the government, and we're here to help. So with all, all my years in government experience, this is something that really helps the public. It really helps our community and those folks that have special needs within our community stay within that. And the vision of John McCormick, our mayor, and, and his desire to make this happen, he's the driving force behind that. We're proud to work for him. We're proud to work for this community, and I thank him much for, for being part of this. Thank you, John. Thank you, Doug. The other pretty cool thing about this building is it's going to have a kitchen that's going to function probably mornings until almost lunchtime as a regular public restaurant. And then afternoons and evenings and weekends, it can be a place where uh, our special needs population, not only 21 and over, but also up to 21, teenagers in early 20s, uh, can work. The building, after our house is done uh, with it every day from 4 o'clock or 4.30 on, is going to house cheerleading and wrestling. Those are two sports that typically get the short end of gym space. Uh, wrestlers and cheerleaders got to drag mats up and down stairs. They get an open classroom. They get the cafeteria. They get wherever they get to practice. Well, we opened it up 
uh, last year, and they played the practice there and had meets there for a couple of months, and then, of course, we had to close it down to do the work to, to uh, build it back up. But when it opens, it'll be a permanent place for wrestling and cheerleading. So if they have a match or a meet or whatever, we can have our kids, our adults and our special needs kids work that counter. And I know a father who told me that he's got his daughter uh, someplace working in just one day a week. And just the fact that she has a name tag and a smock and a hat and just is going to work for four hours a week means so much to that kid. So we're going to do the same thing with that facility. It'll be run privately. Uh, as I said, in the mornings and then whenever the building is open and whenever there's a lot of people there, uh, the special needs adults and kids can serve Snapples and, and chips and, and clean up and stock shelves and uh, work a cash register and learn a lot of life skills there too. So this, it's going to function mostly as 21 and over, but it's also going to be a place where our special needs uh, high school kids, middle school, high school uh, kids can go. So this is just a wonderful facility. We're looking so forward to it opening permanently. This is a great facility for the next couple of months. As, as everybody has said, this is a, a goosebump moment. This is when you really get to do something um, as a public official that you know is going to seriously impact people's quality of life. That's what we're all about. You can do a lot of things to minimally impact people's quality of life. You get them a place where their special needs adult can come every day and it's right in town and it's run by professionals uh, who care about their kids just as the parents do. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get any better than this. Thank you very much.